Welcome to Living with the Times, where among many things we explore the relevance of the Torah portion in our own lives and what's happening in the world. So here in Israel, this week we read Ba'alotcha, and this coming Shabbat we'll be reading Parshat Shalach, whereas in outside of Israel, you will be reading Bahalotcha this Shabbat. But there is something very much in common with these two Parshas, and that is the land of Israel. In Parsha Balotcha, among many things that happen, is they, on the 20th day of the second month of the second year of being in the desert, <clears throat> they began to march to Eretz Yisrael. And the Torah describes how they broke camp and they began marching, and they were really three days away from Israel. But right before coming to Israel, the idea was born that they should send spies to check out the land. Not whether they should go in or not, but just, let's say, for strategic purposes, to know how the land is, the people, how the defenses are, and, and, and all of that kind of things. So they sent spies, and they went for 40 days. And when they came back, we all know the story. They gave a very a terrible report, even though they said the land is beautiful, it's productive, it's, it's tremendous. But the people are too strong for us. We will not be able to conquer the land. And according to tradition, the people, it says in the Torah, the people stood at their tents and cried. And they said, let's pick a new leader. Let's go back to Egypt. If we can't uh, uh, defeat uh, and, and conquer the land, what are we going to do in the desert? And this was considered such a grievous sin, such a lack of faith in God's promises that it was decreed that for every day that they were in the desert, they would have to wait a year to come into Eretz Yisrael until that whole generation of men between 20 and 60 died out and a new generation was ready to come into the land. According to tradition, the women did not listen to this evil report and they weren't under the same, the same decree. So here, the sin was what we'll call saying lush and hara, evil speech about the land of Israel. And of course, it exhibited a, a total lack in God's promise that he had made over and over and over again to bring us into the land, and it would be a land flowing with, with milk and honey. So we can learn something very, very important for that today, is even though it's, we've, people have said it a, a million times, Israel is a miracle. The fact that after 2,000 years, the Jewish people have been able to ingather into our homeland after 2,000 years, is one of the greatest miracles in human history. But we have a whole generation that didn't grow up right after the Holocaust, didn't know the struggles of, of creating a state of Israel and the hardships and all of the wars. And so today, a lot of people say all kinds of not think good things about, about Israel. Not, and not only non-Jews, but many Jews themselves don't know the value of, of the opportunity we have to be in our homeland again. And so we need to be very, very careful that not to, to hold Israel according to a whole different standard, which most of the world does. And Israel is expected to be perfect with, and no problems and no challenges 
and never to make mistakes, but that is totally unrealistic. Israel has many problems, many challenges, but all of that should not overcome the basic reality that it is such a gift of God that we can be here again, that we have a homeland, and we have this connection to, to Eretz Yisrael after 2,000 years. And Jerusalem is reunited, and the, the desert is turning green, and Jews have been absorbed from the four corners of the world. So we have to keep this in mind, always, to be very, very careful of saying bad things about Israel. There's, there's nothing wrong with constructive criticism, but it's very, very problematic when we lose sight of the bigger picture and the, the tremendous merit and gift that we have to be in Israel today.